Hi, welcome to the second video on applying fur and settings. Uh, we're just going to pick it right up where we left off in the last one. And uh, we went ahead and went through. We got a uh, pretty uniform layout on all of our UVs here um, as much as possible. And what we're going to do is just check to make sure that none of these are overlapping. Um, we're going to select all of our UVs and uh, we're going to run UV Final Pass on that. That's going to go through and uh, as long as all of these are still all the way to the corner that means that um, none of our UVs were overlapping. Uh, if it did, um, what that what this would have done would have uh, moved it down and unfolded those, and uh, you would notice it whenever you selected them here. Uh, I've already went through and uh, checked it just in case, uh, but you'll want to do that in your scene um, to du to double check uh, your work pretty much. So we can move that aside. We're not going to use it right now, just at this moment. And uh, now we're pretty much ready to go ahead and we can just apply some fur on here. Uh, we're going to attach a fur description. Uh, this is one I was uh, messing with there. Just know if you need to delete a fur description, uh, it's down here under fur description more. You can go to delete. We're going to delete that fur description there. And we're just going to attach a new one. Give it just a second. And you can see that we're getting a lot of fur from the patches. That's because we've maximized our space on all of those patches. We're not going too big with them and that's a lot of fur so much so it's pretty much an eyesore. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grab one of these come over here to the fur description which you can name. We're just going to assign a preset to it. We'll, uh, we'll just assign Gorilla for now. There we go. Oh yeah and I'm sure somebody wanted to see that's what that looked like rendered. <laughs> Save you some time. I'm sure there's somebody curious. But now we're going to put uh, the Gorilla fur on here. And it's, um, you can see we're just at a base density of 20,000 that's on that preset, which is fine for what just what we're working with right now. Um, don't worry too much about having great cinematic lighting at this point. If it's in there, that's fine. Um, but the main thing is you're going to want to be able to just see in your renders. Um, you can see with um, right now at a global scale of one on this that it's it's hard to tell really what's going on there. Um, you can't really see what direction individual fur patches and stuff are going. I mean it looks awful obviously. Um, so what we're going to do is just drop this down to point one just for right now. Um, just while we're working you can see how short that went down. And the important thing is, is now we're going to be able to tell a lot more information from this. Notice that we have fur that's going in different directions in different places. That's because, like I was saying earlier, fur respects uh, UV direction as well. And um, I rotated a couple of these um, different from the rest of them just to show you uh, an example of that. Um, the way this laid out was that the fur was running up the arm, so I just decided just to run with that. Um, so what we're going to do is there's a real quick easy way to fix that without having to paint any attributes or anything whatsoever. Um, you can just grab one of these, let's say this one right here. You can see obviously that's going up. We don't want it going that direction. So what we're going to do is go right here and say um, offset fur direction. We'll say 90 degrees. That's the direction we need it to go there. And you're going to want to do that on any of the patches that are not going the intended direction with the rest of them. Um, this is a real quick way um, to get away to get around having to paint any attributes of this early on and also do a lot just helping with the look of it as far as your renders go. Um, one thing I want to talk about is uh, also you can just select, um, you can also select them in your outline or you can just select one of the, the fur descriptions there. Um, I want to show uh, after you offset the direction you can tell just a huge difference there um, just with that one step as far as starting to get things going in the right direction. It's um, kind of important to go through that and make sure that everything is flowing correctly. You can just select uh, either one of the, the furs there. You can also um, select it in the outliner if, if you if you prefer to do it that way. Um, whichever way works for you. And on the 
fur feedback shape. Um, some important things to look at here are your U and your V samples. Um, what this is going to do is the more you increase this, the more um, fur you're going to see here in the viewport. If you decrease it, you're going to see less. Also, if you increase this, um, it also has to do with your renders. You're going to want to increase this map size because it's going to sample your U and V coordinates at a higher more, um, which is what these maps are applied to, your U and V coordinates. And if you're getting more detail from because you're sampling more, then you're going to need a larger map to support the higher rate of sampling. Um, else things are going to look strange. You may get some clipping. Um, it depends on what you're doing. For accuracy is the what you're seeing here in this um, viewport. A higher number is going to try. Let's say if we have scraggle on one of these, it's going to um, decrease in this value. Is going to which it's hard to tell right now because it's so low. But decreasing that value would straighten the furs out. You wouldn't see as much. But higher values are going to be more accurate make it easier for you to work um, you can take this over this um, it is going to increase uh, processor um, performance it's going to lag down quite a bit um, in the render stats notice that you have render stats here like you have on most anything with cast shadows um, notice that re visible and reflections and refractions is turned off by default and then also um, under the mental ray tab here Notice that you have Final Gather Cast, Final Gather Receive. Um, one thing that was a good tip to me from uh, landing in, I'll th uh, thank him for this, is um, you don't really need, if you're using Final Gather, say you're using Fur Primus, which I'll talk more about in the next video, you're, you don't really need the Final Gather um, cast for every single one of these furs. Um, it's kind of necessary. It also increases render time quite a bit. So we can just select all of our patches and just turn Final Gather Cast off and that'll turn off the Final Gather Cast for the fur feedback shape on all of the patches that we have selected. It's based off selection. Um, also, we don't need these patches to render ever um, in a render. It's, it's, we don't want that. So also while we have, uh, we'll just go ahead and select them again. We'll select all of our patches and we're just going to turn on uh, rendering off. This is going to, um, I think one of them didn't have a uh, thing on it, but it, that'll turn off the um, the render stats so that way they won't show up in any of your renders. Um, no, no shadows, nothing like that. So with that done, um, we have the final gather off and uh, our patches aren't rendering we we're going to offset our fur direction uh, we just have a basic preset on here we're not going to use this um, we may um, build off of this um, but we're not just going to leave it um, with a preset you never want to do that so go ahead and get uh, your fur set up um, in the next one we're going to talk about lighting um, settings and uh, different ways and different uh, render settings that you can use depending on what type of fur that you're using. So uh, see you in the next video.